Hello, Rod. Can you, at the beginning, tell a couple of words about you and who are you and what's your main purpose in life or something like that? You can look on the wiki. Right. <laughs> you can find a lot of information there, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you can have narration what, in which what, you what say... What is the more important <laughs> from... You can say, Rod is a person who lived in Oroville and da 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 da. What's the main thing about you which you will tell the first, the main... Who are you? To tell who? To tell me, to tell people who are interested in you. What would you like to know? How will you define the core idea of our Ambinda? The core idea mm -hmm. of? Of Aurobindo teaching. Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo. Well, the core idea is that humanity embodies primarily the rational mind, and the rational mind has been leading our species for some time, but it has its limits. Mm -hmm. And many of the problems that we see in the world today are the products of the rational mind. So he sees the possibility that spiritual practice can become a tool of evolution but if it's used for the purpose of evolution, then consciousness can be elevated above the rational mind and spiritual energies can be uh, applied to uh, inner and outer processes. And eventually another type of human being can evolve who is not interested in uh, personal uh, satisfaction or gain, or because that person already has everything. Mm -hmm. Because the higher consciousness realizes itself in all, and all in itself, and it, it has the energy also of the whole. So ethics, which is a relationship between the individual and the society, becomes uh, a sense of oneness with all and action is for the benefit of all and there is no sense of separateness in that spiritual consciousness. But to stabilize that requires a change in functioning because our behavior is not only social, it's also vital and physical and driven by hereditary uh, limits and uh, social conditioning and uh, emotional immaturity and all of those things that determine our behavior um, ha have to be changed. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, his understanding is that kind of integral total change can come if the whole being is elevated above those things and receives a divine force from above, above meaning mm -hmm. in a higher a region of vibration mm -hmm. and, and a, a wider range of feeling, mm -hmm. that energy can be felt. And if the human being elevates itself above its normal patterns, it can feel that. And then that can act gradually on the different levels and centers of the human being, if the human being is committed to that. So his spirituality is, is evolutionary. You said new human being will be created through this evolution. Can be. Could Can be. be. Could be. Okay. But not even a new human being, a new being beyond the human. Okay, new being. And like Maybe you're already this type of new being, all of this well, type of It would of be being. nice. <laughs> and <laughs> are you or not? No. Oh, have you met such a people? One. One? Who? Mira Alfasa.
Uh -huh. And how do you have a criteria of this new type of being? Well, I saw it with my eyes and felt it. So she was completely, impersonally, divinely energized. Mm -hmm. So whenever you met her, you felt immediately freedom and energy and universal identity. And you could see the, the vibrational energies in that person were not the normal ones that you mm -hmm. find in somebody. I've met a lot of interesting people. Mm -hmm. But there was not anybody like that. Mm -hmm. And this is not just spiritual, you know, sweetness and blessings. And This is a very intense dynamic force that is luminous and liberating, which mm -hmm. comes right from the body, bang. Mm -hmm. no, nothing, you don't have to do anything to be um, elevated by that force. And for example, if I feel the same towards you, it means you are the same person. Not exactly, but I'm, if you happen to feel that from me, then that would be really extraordinary. <laughs> and will you agree that you are already uh, the new types of being? No. No? No. Should be many people. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a philosopher. Mm -hmm. And have you gone further the Sri Aurobindo philosophy? No. No, you are inside. I'm a student. You are a student of Sri Aurobindo philosophy. Mm -hmm. And do you have a specific which you are studying? Specific question or specific something? Well, I've, I've written a book called The Philosophy of Evolution. Mm -hmm. And I've written a book called The Philosophy of Religion. Mm -hmm. And Sri Aurobindo is bridging those two fields. Mm -hmm. So it's my studies are based upon his teachings. But but uh, by by saying that, um, actually, my studies are broader than his teachings, because I try to create a context in which many different. Uh, philosophies and and religious events and people um, are connected by certain threads mm -hmm. that are common to them all. So mm -hmm. I, I, I study Sri Aurobindo in the context of various uh, ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. So he fits into the evolutionary way of thinking mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes he fits into the spiritual way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Or this is two different, th which are different, very different. Very different. Can you just shortly what's the well, difference? Well, one one is rational and the other is is intuitional and which is mystical. Which is rational evolution. Scientific evolutionary theory uh -huh. is primarily scientific. Mm -hmm. And by evolutionary, you mean from Darwin all this? Yes, Darwinian evolution. Mm -hmm. And Darwinian evolution has got some philosophers, mm -hmm. not only scientists, mm -hmm. but they're philosophers who think scientifically. Mm -hmm. So there, there are periods in the development of evolutionary theory mm -hmm. that are highly philosophical. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are relevant to Sri Aurobindo's view. Mm -hmm. But in that combination of views, the, the religious and the mystical are not particularly relevant. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've noticed is that the philosophers of evolution tend to rise above conventional rational thinking and see the whole of the evolutionary world mm -hmm. from consciousness down to um, one-celled organisms and matter. Uh, Bergson, for example, Henri Bergson, who's a French philosopher, he was writing at the same time as Sri Aurobindo. Mm -hmm. And he was European and totally connected with mm -hmm. the, the academic world mm -hmm. and the scientific world. But he writes philosophically and he writes with a holistic, mm -hmm. intuitive grasp 
of mm -hmm. human evolution and biological evolution and social evolution and the evolution of ideas and has a more complete view, I think, of the theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. Darwin also goes in those different directions, mm -hmm. but he's more interested in animal, animal evolution. Mm -hmm. So then we find out that Sri Aurobindo was thinking along the same lines as some others, mm -hmm. even though he's coming more from a, an Eastern Sanskritic background. Mm -hmm. Because he studied in England mm -hmm. and was a Greek scholar and s taught French, he was also totally in touch with the um, evolutionary thinkers of the late uh, 19th and early 20th century. Mm -hmm. So he kind of brought evolutionary thinking into Eastern spiritual thinking. Mm -hmm. and came up with some unique uh, ideas that are relevant in that mm -hmm. uh, Western philosophical evolutionary context. Mm -hmm. But people who, who study Sri Aurobindo are usually mainly interested in spirituality. Mm -hmm. So they may not bother to notice how much work he did in the field of evolutionary theory. And they may not even bother to read evolutionary theory at all, even mm -hmm. though Sri Aurobindo writes about it. Mm -hmm. Because he's a spiritual guru. Mm -hmm. And people want that, uh, those who want that, want that more than science. Mm -hmm. But I like both. I mean, I'm interested in both. Mm -hmm. And I see that he was also interested in both. Mm -hmm. So that's why I study it and I teach mm -hmm. it because it gives a broader perspective. Mm -hmm.